Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Fair Sports for today's preview as the EP Elephants are back in action tomorrow in Obecha, um, formerly PE, against the Lions. And it is a very changed EP side and a very young Lions side. And I think it's quite an interesting decision by the Lions. And I think probably the right decision um, after the abysmal performance that we saw from the EP Elephants in um, the first round of the preparation series. You can see the Lions kind of thought, we don't really want to waste too many of our players going down to um, play against the EP Elephants. Um, <clears throat> and so as a result, they played, I mean, about three or four players that sort of are playing regularly, um, and, and of which probably only one of them is really a starter. Um, but then a lot of players from the junior setups, which they, which had a very, very good run up until when they lost the final in the under 20 championship and the championship last year against the Bulls. The EP Elephants have also made a lot of changes. EP, uh, sorry, Peter Davis has, you know, um, rang, rang, rang the changes really and, and sort of kept a lot of, well, bringing in, brought in a lot of players after terrible performance. And I think what we're finding with the EP is going to take a while for them to try and find out who are their best 15 players, who are their best 23 players, who are their best 30 players, you know, which players um, can Peter de Villiers work with, which players need to be moved on, where do they need to strengthen the most. Um, because what we saw against the Bulls was a really a, a case of um, boys against men and just the gulf of quality between what was a second stream Bulls side um, and the EP Elephants, which was... You know, compounded by the loss of Captain um, Ini Radebe, um, who has been ruled out for the rest of the preparation series. Before we actually look at the sides themselves, please do smash a like on the video. Um, subscribe to the channel as well. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think can happen in terms of score predictions in the game itself. Right, and if we look at the EP Elephants, so, you know, I think it's, it's 11 new players um, that are coming to the starting lineup. Um, and the big the big names there that, um, you know, people might have recognized from Southern Kings is CJ Bellerman. Um, he's been there for, for, for quite a while. I think he's going to become a very, very important place, um, player. And then Atun Kozi Katana is, also, is is the only player in the tight five that actually managed to keep his place. So if we're looking at the EP side. We've got Cien Zuzu, Tito Meza Bifile, Emile, Emile Carlson, um, Atun Kozi Katani, Arnold Klein, CJ Bellerman, Anela Lungisa, Zungisa April, Josh Alderman are the pack. Carla Aspilling um, is the um, fly half. He comes in for Inner Debbie. He partners Josh Alderman there. Um, and then Chris Hollis, Sherwin Slater, Ati Mahinja, um, Orton Olsen, and Courtney Winner are the um, is the back line. So um, Courtney Winner will actually will captain the side. Um, he comes in, played a couple of games for the Sharks. So just 23 years old, but, you know, he's been around the park, um, as has um, Carlo Aspilling, who's been around as well. On the bench for EP, Robin Stevens, Lyle Lombard, Lupomlo, um, Ngucha, Inslezi, Dloengu, Bevan Prince-Lu, Diego Williams, Vian van der Sant, and Rian Arons. So, look, I mean, it's, 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 it's once again, it's a very inexperienced side in terms of a lot of players who kind of throughout the years have been on the fringes of playing sort of Varsity Cup. It's kind of... It's almost a semi-pro team, really. It is a semi-pro team. There's no sort of other way to put it. I mean, people like Bevan Prinsloo, who come from the um, NMU um, Varsity Cup side, you know, the Medivas. So it's it's a side where, at the end of the day, it's it's not really a professional side, unfortunately, because of the struggles that they've had. And this is why we've moved away from EP Kings to playing, playing as, as EP Rugby and as the EP Elephants. Um, and having to almost start from, from, from the beginning and try and build up. And that's why, you know, you, you won't recognize a lot of the players and, you know, it's it's a case of a very much a transitional period um, for EB. Speaking of transition, it is a very, very young Lions side. A lot of players, as I said, from the N21 side, but a couple of very exciting players um, to keep your eye on. So, Nathan Beck is a prop, um, sort of been playing a lot as, as sort of a reserve hooker, but he isn't. Um, we'll start a prop. Um, he is alongside Damien Fenter and Vian Herbst. Ruben Skuma and Reynolds Nochnachl are some decent experience there. They played quite a lot in the Curry Cup and in Super Rugby Unlocked. Interesting to see Reynolds Nochnachl actually given the captaincy despite Dylan Smith playing. Dylan Smith obviously very, very experienced, um, but Nochnachl being backed as captain. And, you know, with Marvin Ori leaving, there is a starting spot available um, in the locks. Who's going to partner Willem Alberts? And even after Willem Alberts goes, who will then be the lock combination? And you're looking probably at this stage at Ruben Skuma and Reynard Northnarkel um, to try and put their hands up and prove that they can do the job. Um, in terms of your loose forwards, you've got Mark Sneman, Sibu Siso Sangweni, and Ruan Strauli, son of um, Rudolf Strauli, the, the former Lions CEO. Dylan Smith at Scrum Hop. Tian Swanepoel will once again play at Flower Half. Um, originally a Flower Half and, and sort of showing his versatility. And I think what the Lions want to do, given the fact that Gianni Lombard it continues to be on the sidelines and has quite a long way ahead of him, 
is, you know, whilst having players like E.W. Fulio and Divan Rizzo, um, who can cover fullback, you know, who is going to take up the, that slot at fly half if Elton Yankees gets injured or if they want to try and rotate and stuff like that, which they will have to do. And that is why Tien Swanepoel is being given the run out there. Uh, Nguyen Selenga and Princeton Kabidi are the two wings. James Valencia and Manu Ras are probably the most exciting um, part of the Lions team. You know, um, James Valencia is a very young, um, very talented player, plays a lot at fly half as well. He's got an, a massive boot. Uh, Manu Ras, we've seen quite a bit of him sort of in and out of the side. Hasn't really had a chance to sort of um, make a mark. You know, it's really difficult competing against one to see the Similane. Um, but he will have a start at outside center. And Divan Rousseau, the new acquisition from the Bulls. Um, for, for me, I thought it was a pretty, not a poor acquisition because he's got some talent. But I just thought it wasn't an exciting player to sign. You know, when you've got players like Warwick Halant going to the Stormers. And you've got, you know, the Bulls are bringing in, you know, um, Arno Burta or bringing Gera Apple. Now bringing in Johan Gerson. You know, to go and bring in Divan Rousseau. In a back line where you, I mean, we lost Tyron Green last year. You know, one of those exciting young players in South Africa. And we brought in Divan Rousseau as the sort of a replacement. Um, and I think that just kind of shows you maybe the issues with the Lions. And that there's a lot of talent in the union, but they we need to get some big names into that side. You know, you need to bring be able to bring back some like a Franco Master back on the side. Um, I think that's kind of where the, where the Lions are, are a bit lacking. A bit of star quality. I mean, you look at the Bulls and they're trying to put together a back line which includes the likes of Inbros, Pierre, Damian Willemse. Johan Gerson, Cornel Hedricks, Debman Khan, Shavino Jakobs, you know, um, Cody Aronson, a really, really, like, star-studded back line. You know, it's something that the Lions could maybe learn. I mean, look, I'm not saying you have to go out and sign four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, spring box, but I think we could do, I think you look at the lock position, and I think you look at sort of full back, probably need to try and find somebody, um, even full back wing, that they can cover both sides. Um, depending on what happens with Chance Wanderpool's development, I've been quite impressed with them in terms of the boot, but sometimes open players left... Um, let them a bit down in terms of being fullback. On the bench, though, we've got Mone Brandon, Balele, um, Muntajane, Asinati, and Klabakanya. Really, really excited to see him. I mean, in fact, I would have liked to have seen him start. And for me, I think Vian Herbst has to play a very good game in the next couple of get, um, weeks to warrant being in around the setup. Because when you've got somebody like Asinati and Klabakanya, who's such a talented player, he's, he's huge. He is an absolute unit. Um, and I think he's got a very bright future and played very well in the 21. You know, he's going to come there, he's going to start pushing. Um, so I think, you know, with uh, Yanni Dubisi, Carlos Sardi, you know, I think Vian Herbst needs to try and justify um, why he should be continued to back if the other two can't play ahead of somebody like Asanati and Kabakanya, who's a really talented player. Um, and Dice Mtiana there, he's on um, Esther Hayes and Mornay van der Berg, um, a very nice um, player to bring off the bench, a live wash scrum off, seen quite a bit of him there. Jordan Hendricks at the fly half um, from Glenwood, came up from the Cape there. Uh, Luke Rousseau, Sibus Hiso, Shongwe, and Jared Kahns are the rest of the bench. So... It is a very young side. It is a very experienced line side, but I think it's got enough to do the job. You know, it's it's you're looking at an EP Elephant side, which has got no continuity, you've got no playing time. They, I mean, they had no playing time going into the Bulls game, and they've now changed their side a lot, which means once again, you know, that they're, they're probably going to be quite slow out the blocks um, and probably struggle a little bit with the pace of the game, and that's where the Lions need to capitalize and, and put them to bed relatively early. I do think that there are enough good players in the lines there to, to easily sort of breeze past the elephants. I'm going to go lines about 15. Um, in fact, I'm going to go lines about 20. I think it could be more, actually, to be honest. I think they could. It could get a bit ugly unless the EP elephants really put in a much improved display. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Smash like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing reviews of all the preparation series matches, starting with two matches tonight, so make sure you keep it locked on for Air Sports. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.